Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Code with Ease. In today's session, we are going to discuss another question as part of the array series that is called the trapping rainwater or it is also known as rainwater trapping problem. If you are someone who is new to the channel, here's a brief introduction about us. Hi, here's a brief introduction for the ones who are new to the channel. The objective of Code with Ease is to make problem solving in programming simpler. If you are someone who wants to become a great developer and wants to level up their skills, data structures and algorithms is indispensable and you need to form a solid foundation of that. And this is exactly where we come in. Because we post topic-wise video explanations in Java on various coding interview questions that can not only help to crack the coding interview, but also help to improve and refine the problem-solving abilities as a developer. And finally, here is the USB of our channel. We code every solution live, we do not copy-paste code snippets. We start off by clearly defining the problem statement, the given inputs, the required output, time and space complexities. We also then discuss the brute force way of solving any question without jumping on to the solution and then gradually move on to the optimal solution. We try to use online whiteboarding wherever applicable to explain the approach and the concepts. So that is all about us. So if you guys also want to be a part of this journey, do support us by subscribing to the channel. So with that, now let's get back to the question. So according to this question, we are given an array of n non-negative integers, which represent the height of blocks and the width of each block is one. We have to compute how much water can be trapped between those blocks during the rainy season. So here n is six, we have this array where we have six elements and these are the width of the blocks. So first is three followed by zero, zero, two, zero, four. So as we can see, there are three blocks followed by zero, like there are no blocks consecutively. Then we have two blocks and then finally we have four blocks. So based on this, if this is the way the blocks are being positioned, as you can see in the diagram, this much water has accumulated. Now we have to calculate how much water has been accumulated. The calculation for that will be again in terms of block. So as it is said that the total trapped water is 10. How? Firstly, so as we can see here that in the second block three blocks three units of water is connected next again three units of water is collected for this block which is of height two in this only one block of water is collected and in the next one again three blocks of water is collected so three plus three plus one plus three is ten so the total amount of water collected in terms of units or blocks will be ten and that is what we have to give as an output so this is the expected time complexity it is linear and expected auxiliary space is also linear we can take additional space if you want and these are the companies in which this question has been asked in interviews so now let's move to the whiteboard to understand the intuition behind this question then we'll understand the approach and we'll also do a dry run on that so into the whiteboard this is the array that i've taken and i've written the time and the space complexities over here so as we can visualize from this diagram that the collected amount of water is 10 units so now let's understand the intuition Although it is quite easy to visualize and understand and predict how much the amount of water can be stored, but when we have to do it by writing a program on this, it becomes a bit tricky because that is where now the intuition will come. How can we understand that here three units of water will be stored, here three units, but here one unit, again here three units. How is that happening? If I have to calculate how much rainwater can be trapped in total, what is the smallest unit of problem that I have to solve? How much water is trapped or can be stored in every index that is what i have to find out if i am able to find out how much water is stored in every index i can add it up and get the total amount of water which is the required answer how can i know this to know this we have to find out the maximum height of the blocks on either side find the max height the height of the blocks on left and right i'll give a small example Let's say I am here. Here we have two indexes, right? Because we have 0 and 0. When I am over here, what is the maximum block on the left hand side? This one, which is of height 3. What is the maximum height of the block on the right hand side? This one, which is of height 4. What is the minimum of these two? 3 or 4? 3. And the amount of water stored in this index is also 3. So what do we conclude from here? Find the maximum height on, on left and right. And from here, Take the minimum of that means minimum of the max height on left and the max height on right, which also means we have to do some kind of array pre-processing to find out what is the maximum height of the block on the left hand side and what is the maximum height of the block on the right hand side. But is that it? Let's figure out. So this was one instance where we have three units of water. Now let's come to this block, which is of height two. 
here left hand side the maximum height is also 3 here also same thing on the right hand side the maximum height is 4 what is the minimum of this 3 but going by that logic even here 3 blocks of water should be stored but it is not the case here we have only 1 so how can we go from 3 to 1 if you do minus 2 So, what is 2 here? The height of the existing block means the height of the block at this current index. So from that, what can we conclude? That if we are able to find the minimum of the maximum height of left and right, from that, if we can minus the current value, the current index's height, then we can get the required water stored in every index. That is what we can deduce from this. This is the formula. Max height of left, max height of right, take both and find the min of that and minus that with the current index, whatever the height is. If it is 0, then minus 0 or anything, any number, whatever it is. And in that way, if you are able to get the required water stored at every index, add up all the individual units of water by doing a traversal of the array, add up all individual units of water collected and that is going to give us the answer. So, if we just do a quick dry run from here, from here the maximum height again is 3 and 4, minimum is 3, 3 minus 0 is 3. So, that's why we got 3. Same thing applies for this third index also. For this, we just calculated that 3 minus 2 will give us 1. In this case, again it is 0. So, 3 minus 0 is going to give 3 units. So if we add all of these is when we are going to get 10. So, with that now let's write the code for this. So, now we'll start with the code changes. So, since the return type is long, so we'll first store this as long only, the potential answer for this. And then we'll start with the array preprocess. So, we'll create two temporary arrays. We'll call one of them as the left array. The first element of this left array is going to be the first element of the ARR. So, we are going to initialize that. And now we will start with the rows. So, we'll start from the first index i equal to 1, i less than n, i plus plus. So, the element that is going to be stored at the ith index of the left array is going to be a max of the current element that is ARR of i and the initial element which is already stored in the left array which is i minus 1th element, just the immediate previous element. If the current element is greater than the immediate previous element means the current element becomes the current max. It will discard because what we are doing is starting from left side, we are initializing at every index of this left array. We are initializing at every index what is the maximum block, what is the maximum height of the block so far. Initially it is 3 but when we reach here, now the maximum becomes 4. So that is what we are trying to do over here. And the same thing we are going to do for the right array preprocessing. In case of right array also, since we are starting from behind, the, the last most element is going to be the last element itself. So right of n minus 1 because n is the length of the array, so n minus 1 at index n minus 1th index is going to be the last element. So that is going to be the last index of the ARR, which is again n minus 1. And from here, now we are going to start the traversal from n minus 2th index. Here also math.max of ARR of i and right of i plus 1. So instead of starting from the last element, we are starting from the second last element and we are checking whether the current element is greater or the element which is already stored, the immediate rightmost next element and that is greater. And in this way, we are trying to do the array preprocessing for figuring out what is the maximum height of the left, from the left what is the maximum height of a block and from the right what is the maximum height of a block. Now what we have to do, once we have this, now we have to do a array, plane array traversal of this ARR. And now we have to start calculating the amount of water which is trapped at every index. So for that as we discuss the formula like we derived, so this is going to be answer in which we are going to keep on adding whatever we have acquired. So, so we'll do math dot min of the element on the left sub array that is left of i because this left array at every position would have stored the correct element which is the maximum element left of i and right of i. We get the minimum of it and then we minus that with the current element that is ARR of i. So, I will put this inside. Find out the min, minimum of either of the sides and then minus the value of the current element. 
or the height of the current element. And finally, we can return the answer. So, answer will now contain the total water that has been trapped, this entire blue section. We'll compile this. So, we'll submit this. So that's all about this question, the rainwater trapping problem. It's a commonly asked question and a bit tricky, but this is basically not requiring any algorithm, any fancy algorithm as such. It's basic plain application of the loops concept and array pre-processing concept. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the session so far. Do let us know in the comments below if you guys have any questions or doubts or you want to share any feedback on this video. If you have enjoyed the session so far, do hit the like button so that this can reach out to many more people. And if it does, it just gives us enough motivation to put out more such content. Also, if you are looking forward to more videos like this, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon next to the subscribe button to never miss an update on our upcoming videos. Thank you so much for watching.